Like, mm -hmm. let the truth hit you. You know, don't run away from it because you're used to hearing something that's comfortable and something that everyone is 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 saying is politically and socially acceptable. You know, facts. Hey, and you matter as a matter of fact, I think it's very important even for you know us uh, millennials, Gen Zers, to be speaking out against um, some of these. Uh, some of the, not even speaking out against, but just speaking on some of mm -hmm. these concepts. You know, dating and you know marriage and you know, uh, your value, things of that nature, because even, right. honestly, even the older ones that are conscious, you know, they tend to have their own uh, uh, unawareness about them. Like, I noticed that even the conscious Black women, they still, older Black women, they still have that, uh, it's almost like cognitive dissonance, you know? Yeah. They they can see the problem, but they don't see it within themselves, you know. And so yeah. that, that relates in their message, and it's like they're missing it. That's what them that aspect is what they're missing when they're talking to young women. They can't relate to that. Right. Um, yeah. It is. So yeah, I definitely is. respect. I just want to respect you uh, coming out here and speaking the way you speak. You know, it's a blessing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see. Now a big thing as well. Our mother's generation really flicked the switch on a gender war, if we're being honest. They really said, you know, let's play this game. It's time for us to play this game. And that's, it, it shows up a lot, you know, throughout our culture yeah. now in the millennials and Gen Zers. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. big thing, biggest things is, is divesting um, uh, this whole feminist movement where it's like, well, we're just going to, we're going to move on with our black men. We're going to go our own way. We're going to date out and explore our options. Yeah. Lord. What's your thoughts? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my life. It's just so dumb. You know, first of all, I mean, there's just several reasons why it's just dumb. You feel me? A lot of the times these women are black women. Well, they're not a lot. These are black women, right? Who love black girls. They always on some black girl magic and melanin this, melanin that. You feel me? But you want to get, you know, with, with, with a white man and create like these little mixed children. And I ain't got nothing against mixed children, but create these mixed children that y'all be hating on because mm. a lot of times would be the so-called divesters who be saying stuff like, I'll bring up the marriage statistics. I'll bring up the fact that 80, the fact that 87% of black men who are married are married to black women, right? And they'll be like, well, they only married to light-skinned women. It's like, where'd you get this from? <laughs> Were you just pulling statistics out your butt? Like, what is this? You know? But they say stuff like that, but then you want to go and get with a white man mm. and get more of these light skins. You feel me? And it's just like, you know, it's it's so ridiculous to me. So the notion is just obscene, first of all. Like, and then you're not going to move on without black. Like, you're not going to, you can't make more, like, black girl magic and all that kind of stuff by not creating more, like, melanin rich black people like that just don't work so the whole point is null and void and then third of all it's like you just assume that these white men like just is is, is less than over y'all and won't y'all you feel me like you throwing yourself at them and they looking at you like Ugh. right you know? like what is what is this because no person who like any logical person is not going to want to deal with someone who despises their own like if it like white men, I'll I see it in the comments. It'll be these girls on Twitter talking about I'm a divest, I'm gonna give me a white man. And a white man be in the comments like, no, keep that to yourself. <laughs> because they don't like like they don't want that. Yeah. Like you hate yourself. What I look like trying to love somebody that hate themselves. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It don't make any sense, you know? And then I mean, I won't even get into like the gene pool thing. Oh yeah. You know, because I've offend some folk, you know. Yeah, and it's way out shit. Yeah, that's but, but, it's, but it's science. You mm. feel me? Like if I'm gonna have children. I want to make the most genetically sound children I could make. You feel me? That's we black black man. People have the greatest gen genetic diversity. If me and you are around 100 white people, between the two of us, we got more genetic diversity than those 100 white people combined. Mm. I'm not even trying to even consider watering down my gene pool. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. I so feel there's you. reasons why that don't make no damn sense. <laughs> As a matter of fact, hold up. I wanted to, uh, I should have pulled this bit up. Hold up. It doesn't make no sense. You know? And then, I mean, there's just so much stuff. Like, I was on Twitter and it was this black woman who was, she was so distraught. Are you playing a video? I'm about to go ahead. No, I, I was, I just saw this little tweet and it was this black woman who was like so distraught. Um, 
over like what this man had told her daughter about her hair. You know, her daughter had, I guess her hair was out and it was in his natural state. And she was like, oh, I'm so upset. He told her that her hair was messy and that she should put it in a ponytail. And she's like, and now my daughter wants to put her hair in her ponytail because of him. And everybody in the comments going off like, oh, did you tell him off and blah, blah, blah. And then come to find out from looking further down in the tweet, the man who told her daughter this was the girl's father. Oh, oh my God. God. Yes, <laughs> a white man. Figures. So it's like, <laughs> what are we doing? You, feel like you get with a man who's going to give your child it complexes about how they view themselves. And they love, they love to ignore that part of the conversation when they talk like, about racism. Yeah, the little girl growing up, she thinks her natural hair is ugly because her father told her so. Like, mm. what are we talking about? And now, this is the type of man you're raising your child to go after. The one that don't even like her ass. Right. And I'm just like, you know, like, if we just laying down with somebody, don't don't lay down with somebody that look at your natural hair and be like, ugh. Like, what, what is this? Mm. It's craziness to me, so. Eh. Self-hatred is real. Really? It's real. Really. All right. Let me, uh, I want to play this, this uh, quick little, this uh, clip I, I got from off one of your uh, YouTube lives. I mean, I'm sorry, one of your Instagram lives <laughs> on YouTube, which you need to put on YouTube, your damn self, because uh, okay. this is somebody else shit. <laughs> you're what you call it, you're live. I want to, I want to play this clip right quick. And the black women, as if in independence is something that we pride ourselves being strong. Now, why are you going to do this to me, Eric? <laughs> How you gonna go out on me right now, Eric? As if in Let's try again. Hold up. Okay. We pride ourselves being strong, independent black women. As if in independence is something that we should strive for as a people. Independence is death. Everybody needs somebody. And the reason why we're struggling in our households and our communities is because we think that there's something good about being independent. Black women need black men. And black men need black women. You feel me? And I'm not going for the nonsense in my comments. I'm really not. I was going for the nonsense in the comments. <laughs> what are you talking about? Folks be trying me. Well, what about you love who you love and you can't help who you fall in love with? Like that kind of rhetoric. It it like, first of all, you can, you know, because oh, I feel yeah, like these things are intentional. Mm. Like, because like, say, I'm, say I like somebody, right? That requires me getting to know them. That requires me going on dates. That requires me talking to them on the phone. I have control over all of that. Before I get deep into my feelings with somebody, I can control that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And I'm not even going to open myself up to have like these conversations and these dates and these phone calls and get deeply invested in a white person. I'm just not. You feel me? Why would you? Why would like, you want to? I can't just fall in love. Because if that's the case, I'll fall in love with you. You know, well, I just, I like her. She's a cool person. We in love now. Like, we have control over all of this. Mm. You can't just haphazardly fall in the love. It takes an effort. You get, it's the effort of getting to know someone. And if you're going to put in the work and the effort to get to know somebody, why not put in the effort and work to get to know somebody Black? Yeah, that's a fact. And you know what? I think that's uh, that's kind of been missing, at least. Well, you were blessed with a, a conscious family, a black, conscious Black mother and father, as was I. You know, so that part of that was already, you know, don't bring on a white boy. That was already kind of in, right. in me for, you know what I'm saying, for at least for the, on the surface level. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's missing a lot is that even if, even if you want to talk about the outside the interracial is intentional dating. We're not really taught to right. intentionally date, you know, especially with the newer generation, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, the last generation set off, set off the flick. I mean, set the switch on this plan, this gender war. And so. A lot of our mothers is on some shit. Like, I mean, I hear older black women all the time talking about they on some hot girl summer shit. Like, they just out here, whether they look at they, and, and a lot of them are single mothers or they've been in relationships for a long time, but they look at their relationships like, oh, I was only in it because your father, I was only in it because my family, because, but then that message gets misconstrued with young girls. So we like, damn, we start looking at relationships like, damn, do we really want that? Or well, maybe I should right. mm -hmm. date around in college first, have a, you know? Yeah. Like the thing is this, it's like, we're the only race of people who don't understand um, that there's a science of like mating. And that's one of the things mm -hmm. that I love about the teachings of the nation Islam, because they go into detail with like the science of mating. You know, we, we think that it's just all about like love. And so when we hear stuff like, well, I stayed for the family and I stayed for all that, we don't understand that like, 
it's it's bigger than just being in love with somebody because that's gonna like subside when you with somebody for some years you know what i'm saying like you love them but then y'all be getting on each other's nerves sometimes it ain't always like oh lovey-dovey and we're so in love and we you know, posting selfies and ussies and all that kind of stuff together. It's not that all the time. Mm. You know, sometimes I can't stand this Negro. <laughs> you feel me? And I've seen it. I've seen times where my mama couldn't stand my daddy and vice versa. I was like, oh, they're not rocking with each other right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's normal. You're not always like, because do you always love your friends all the time? Like you got people that you cool with. Yeah. And sometimes your friends get on your nerves. That don't does that mean you're not friends no more? Does it mean the whole friendship was a lie? No, that's just how life goes. Mm -hmm. But our society is so dumb that it's convinced everyone that having any type of argument or disagreement is toxicity and narcissism. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. You just don't know how to deal with people. That's all. That's a fa you know what? It, it, it's a choice to stay with them. A lot of our parents, a lot of our grandmothers, um, and mothers before then. They chose to stay with their men, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, you got a lot of black women right now. They get out of relationships and the first thing they scream is, oh, he was abusive. I got out because he was abusive. Right. You know, and a lot of the times we're not even being completely honest. We are very aggressively in our masculine behaviors. We can be very antagonizing, you know, even with the abuse. So it's not even really abuse. A lot of it, a lot of times it's reaction. It's not abuse. Yeah, it's you know? arguments. It's simple relationship stuff. And I tweeted that one day, like, we got to stop calling like simple relationship ups and downs abuse because it's not. Like, if this Negro disagree with you, he ain't gaslighting you. Stop. Stop it. It's right. not abuse. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's call abuse abuse. Because when you call in simple, like, arguments and stuff abuse, it waters down what actual abuse is. Facts. You know? And Facts. that's a huge problem. But honestly, th that's what I think it is. Like you said, it's, it's like they chose to stay with each other. That's one of the things my parents told me that, like, um, that, like, marriage and, and, and the family is about being committed. It's about knowing that regardless of what happens, we sticking with each other. You know, I'm I'm not trying to run soon as something crazy happens or whatever, whatever disappointments, because disappointments will come. We are we're going to be disappointed by the people that we love because those are the only ones who could really disappoint us. Mm. You feel me? Like the ones we love are the only ones who have the power to disappoint us. So it's gonna happen, you know. But it's like, what do you do when that happens? You know, do you label it as toxic and then not have anybody close to you in your life? I was reading another article that was talking about like how the average millennial um, doesn't really have any like true friends. Wow. Like back in the day, people had like at least like three to four core friends, like the generations before us. But now we so on this everybody and everything is toxic wave that we don't even like we don't even preserve relationships. We just let them go at the first sign of issue and label it toxicity. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And our relationships are the same way. You know, we're not trying to thug it out or stick with good people. We throw away good people because our cutoff game is so strong. <sighs> no, nah, the communication game is weak is what it boils down to. Ah, I like that. You know? That's a fact. That's a fact. And a lot of us weren't taught uh, good communication skills, to be honest. And it, sh it right. shows heavily within the culture. See, see. We do not play by our green. <laughs> you fuck with the team. Might find your west in the creek. Yeah, yeah. We're crossing our teams. We don't never miss a beat.